All right. Welcome back to it. Uh, my name's Mookie or Mark, if you prefer, uh, from the Independent 88.5 FM. It's another here at home artist interview. If you like the content with the interviews, if you like our 88.5 live sessions that drop online periodically, uh, please know we're a, a listener supported public radio station here in Los Angeles and Orange County. Sign up online if you can and subscribe through 88.5 FM.org. Today, we're here with Zach from Dust Bowl Revival, some hometown heroes, and we've been following you for a number of years. Um, hey, man. How's everybody doing? Hey, man. Uh, I'm glad to be emerging from uh, from Dadtown, USA, Babyville yeah. over here. We had a newborn in the house here. She might start screaming behind me. I apologize in advance. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're really excited for this, uh, this show at the Wiltern, so it'll be Great to get out of the house finally. <laughs> oh, I hear you, man. Um, you're probably itching to get out. I'm I'm ready to go back into the clubs, but I haven't quite uh, quite done that yet. So, congratulations on the birth of your first child. Thank you. Uh, I know all about that. You you look well rested, which is amazing. We had the you know the the night help last night, so you know that. There you go. If you did this interview tomorrow, it would probably be be much worse. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad I got you at a good day. Um, yeah. DustbowlRevival.com is the website. Uh, the band's been active in Southern California for a number of years. We've been saying that you guys are based out of Venice. Uh, would it's, I be it's lying? It's a spiritual home. Like, it's where it all started. I mean, we yeah. I've been around doing music with Dust Bowl Revival for over a decade. So I used to live on the boardwalk for many years. Uh, we kind of you know, started there as this sort of collective of many different uh, traditions, rock and roll and blues and, and, and gospel music, folk music, harmony, uh, singing of all stripes. And, uh, you know, we'd busk down on the beach and, and all over town and play, played every dive you can imagine, probably. Um, but then uh, they started paying attention a little wider and we've been touring internationally for probably the last six or seven years yeah amazing um you uh well you, you did mention that you got a show coming up at the will turn and uh it, not only that it looks like you're supporting uh the uh infamous string dusters for an yes. entire up and down the west coast sort of run um shows include the belly up down in solana beach and of course the will turn i saw you uh tweet by the way if people want to follow you on twitter how do they find you at Dust Bowl Revival. Um, yeah, we're playing, uh, you know, down San Diego, then up in the Fillmore in San Francisco, uh, and then Portland, Seattle, Eugene, Oregon. Just a little kind of hopscotch West Coast run. But uh, look, as an L.A. band playing the Wiltern, it's a pretty special thing for us, even if it's a supporting slot. I mean, uh, we did one time a few years ago opening for Lake Street Dive. Um, and, you know, it's just a magical room. I mean, it's been around since, I think, the 20s. So. No, yeah, that's it's amazing. That was the tweet that I saw is that, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, you kind of had to pinch yourself because you're playing this uh, iconic stage, you know, right uh, in your hometown, which is amazing. So before we started rolling tape here, Zach, um, you mentioned uh, about the band you're supporting Dust Bowl Revival, and you hit me with a, a, a term, a, a genre that I don't know if I've ever heard before. How would you describe uh, the uh, the infamous string dusters? I would say like they are one of the uh, leading voices in that sort of jam grass scene, you know, jam grass, bluegrass adjacent. It's like kind of um, under the umbrella of, I think, whatever the Grateful Dead left us in this sort of combination of um, improvisational acoustic music that is uh, made to expand your mind a little bit, you know. And you said that people are starting to lump you within that category, but well, the, the true fact is that Dust Bowl Revival has many sort of sounds throughout the years and is constantly evolving. Right. I mean, look, when you've had a band for over 10 years, um, you change with your with your tastes, with your inspirations. Um, I grew up in Chicago playing more rock and roll and blues and, and that kind of stuff. And in a way, we've kind of returned to kind of my first love you know we we've gotten much more electric and, and funky over the last um little bit and uh but i i would lie if i didn't say that my first instinct is always to write harmony folk music so the song that you guys have been playing on 88.5 uh the exception is our latest single it was a, a kind of a collab with the secret sisters 
an amazing Grammy winning uh, duo out of Alabama. And it's this very kind of soft love song with these big harmonies. And you would say, well, that's not funk music or, or rock and roll, but it's like, it's all kind of connected. It's like, is Fleetwood Mac all rock and roll? Sometimes they have acoustic music. Sometimes they have party music. You know, it's like, I want to have songs that just work yeah. and, and feel great. And that's yeah. what we've been doing. There, there is a song "Dreaming" from Dust Bowl Revival that uh, will will uh, will stand the test of time, and will probably always oh, be playing you, that particular song. But you did mention the new release, "The Exception" with the Secret Sisters. Um, how'd you link up with them? We 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 just think that that they're amazing. Yeah, I've been a fan of them for you know, God, since they first put out, I think their first record with T Bone Burnett and. I'm a sucker for sister harmony. Um, it's just, there's something magical in their harmonies, honestly. And yeah, um, I had them on my podcast, the show on the road uh, last year. Um, and when we were thinking about someone to really make this track, the exception, which was kind of like a, a, a castaway song, we, we hadn't finished it and it was going to be on the scrap heap. And I was like, no, but I love this song so much. I played it at like house parties as like a fun song that would sing with the audience and i was like well i wonder if they would sing with us and they agreed to do it you know down in muscle shoals and uh yeah. put some harmonies down and, and we went from there love that we met them for the first time when they came in with john paul white and sang back up with his band right. and just the nicest duo and incredibly talented you gotta oh, yeah. be kidding me right i uh, love the the muscle shoals connection as well um, you mentioned the podcast. You are, in fact, a prolific podcaster. Uh, is that where the magic happens right there? You're, you're standing in front of the mic. Um, no, I'm actually more in the living room right here, uh, trying right. to keep our, our little one from freaking out. Um, but the uh, podcast is called The Show on the Road. I've done it for the last uh, three plus years. Kind of just a, a, a homegrown passion project. I, I team with the, the Bluegrass Situation a uh, great website who helps me put it out. And I've, you know, I've, I think I have 110 episodes right now. Um, the last few were, uh, we put out St. Paul and the Broken Bones last week. And Amazing. Keb Mo and Allison Russell on this like new season. I guess we call it seasons, but it's like when, you know, when we can put the episodes out and, and I had to take a little break because uh, of the baby mayhem over here. But yeah. Um, yeah, there's some cool ones coming up. I think uh, I have Penny and Sparrow uh, group, a uh, harmony group, and uh, uh, Drew Holcomb and 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 folks like that. But the, you know, the the podcasts that I love are people talking about what really happens in songwriting. And a lot of times, it gets a little precious when people interview musicians. It's like, well, tell me, like, where did you grow up? And you know, how did your dad influence your music? And I'm like, that's fine, but I want to know what the songs are really about, what the seed and and where it comes from. And sometimes we go some really weird places. So it's right. been it's been a fun way to talk to some of my all time favorite musicians. So not only are you band leader and you know pretty much uh, I'm I'm guessing chief songwriter with Dust Bowl Revival, but you're your own podcast host, podcast producer, podcast booker. And uh, man, you've been doing an amazing job, like top tier sort of A-list, you know, musicians uh, are, uh, are joining you on that thing. It's cool, man. Well, I think uh, the Americana roots community, and I try to branch out from that, but I think there's a really cool thing happening in that um, community that not enough people are talking about. I think we, we've, um, I've tried to coin this new term that it's like maybe the new classic rock. You know, like the music that we grew up with that we loved so much that had something to say that wasn't afraid to um, push some boundaries and and could involve soul music and, and, and rock and roll and folk music. And it was all kind of together. It wasn't like, well, you only get to play this one thing, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think Americana is, is trying to do that. Um, and so I'm curious about telling that story selfishly as as, as I'm, I guess, part of that um, community with Dust Bowl Revival, but also um, I, it makes me sad that a lot of that music is not championed on a much wider scale, you know, um, because I think it's some of the greatest music ever created. I think people like Brandy Carlisle or, um, you know, artists like that are starting to be able to be seen on a much 
bigger scale. And that's great. And I think that's you need, true. You need more of that. That's true. Jason Isbell and, right. uh, you know, artists like that. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, going back to the band real quick, I'm seeing here on dustbowlrevival.com, there is a deluxe edition of a previous album available now. Yeah. So, um, is it you, is it me, which has that song dreaming on it? Um, we released this, uh, deluxe version last year with commentary on all this track. So some of the band members, um, talking about how the songs were, were recorded and where they came from. And it kind of was like my way of interviewing like my own band as uh, mini podcast episodes. Uh, so that was cool. And there was, I think, a, a special release on there of uh, Beside You, which is, was again, like a, a song that we didn't think was going to make the record. And now it's like one of the most listened to songs on our Spotify. So sometimes the songs you think are, are, garbage or you're going to cast away are the songs people actually want to hear so so that's the uh the deluxe edition with all the bells and whistles that's available right now and uh any news on the release of a brand new lp we are uh going to be putting out an ep i think of some new music with our new uh lineup um and uh we have some special guests coming in the background here i love um, that but the um the funny thing is like these songs have been evolving over the last uh, few months with our really cool new singer, uh, LaShawn Haley. And um, we were like, well, let's, let's just sort of put them out one at a time. And we're like, no, these songs, there's something special about them. And I think like EPs are becoming like a, a thing again, you know, like it's like a, like a quick little burst of music that can get people locked in again. And, and when you have new members in a band, you know, the pandemic was hard for a lot of bands. We had some folks who didn't want to really be a part of the group anymore. And we had some amazing new people come in. The transition, I think, was hard in some ways and that people were like, well, what happened to all my favorite players? And then I wanted to introduce them to some of these new uh, voices because they're so awesome, you yeah. know, and yeah. you'll see. LaShawn and I singing together at the will turn on the 31st. And it's just, there's something magical about her. And I think she's going to be a star, honestly. And I'm glad that we snatched her up for a, a little bit of time here. That's incredible. New member. Uh, the, the future seems bright for the band. Um, it just uh, incredible, man. Um, and, uh, you know, God willing, I got my fingers crossed that you and I will be working together in some capacity in the yeah, future, uh, maybe on some radio stuff. Who knows? Yeah. If the stars align, then then we'll be we'll be getting some stuff going. Well, it's um, radio stations like you guys who are actually playing the music that like matters right now. I think, again, not saying that the new classic rock is a thing yet, but it's about people championing this new music in a wider way. And you guys are doing it, which is awesome. Right. Uh, don't tell K-Rock because we don't want them to start doing that. You know, uh, tell your friends about the independent 88.5 FM. Right. Uh, again, dustbowlrevival.com is the website. You guys are all over social media. Uh, got some shows planned finally, which has yeah. to feel amazing. And um, I think that's all, really all I got for you, man. We're happy to introduce our listeners to your music and you. um, we'll be there for you to support um, your stuff. Always. Yeah. Well We'll see you at the will turn on the 31st. Yeah, fun. buddy. Any, any other parting shots before we kind of wrap it up here? I know you got a, it sounds like you got a dog and a baby back there to take care of, you know, uh, just a lot of fierce ladies who probably want some food right now. So. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough, man. Yeah. Um, all right, Zach, we appreciate the time and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks Mookie. 88.5 FM, KCSN, and KCSN HD1, Northridge, Los Angeles. KSBR and KSBR HD1, Mission Viejo. A service of California State University, Northridge, and Saddleback College. Member-supported public radio. Streaming on the web at 88.5 FM.org.